On January 13, 1989, Bethesda Chevy Chase High School proudly welcomed 15 students and teachers from Moscow School 45 to BCC and the USA. Earlier that day, President Ronald Reagan greeted the Soviet students and their American counterparts at the White House. Thank you, Charles, and Ambassador Dubinin, and our young honored guests. I thank you all very much. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome you all here. And let me say, I'll have to brace myself for this. This is Novim Godem. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, that needs a translation. For those here who don't speak Russian, it means Happy New Year, if I said it correctly. <laughs> But I want particularly to thank Ambassador Dubinin for the great cooperation the Soviet government has provided in making this exchange possible. It's just been eight months since I proposed this program to President Gorbachev, and I'm very happy to see it already underway as I prepare to leave office. Let me also commend Charlie Wick for the outstanding work that he's done in organizing this and other exchange programs. Under his leadership, USIA has made a vital contribution to United States-Soviet relations through the development of people-to-people -people programs that make it possible for us to better understand one another and the world we live in. Now to all of you, the American and the Soviet students here today, I want to tell you that I share your excitement. You're representing your countries in a new international program. You have received a unique opportunity to learn about another country, and you embarked on a great personal adventure. To the Soviet students, I want to say welcome to America. You made a long voyage to come here, but I think you'll find many things to delight and fascinate you. Last spring, I spoke to students at Moscow State University, where some of you may go on to complete your studies. I talked to them about the political and economic system in the United States, but you will have the chance to see it for yourself. And I think you'll find American democracy and our free economy both remarkable and thrilling. What with our political parties and our open elections, all of the independent media, free labor unions, private businesses, and private organizations of every type and size, America has more different independent participants in our system and we have flavors of ice cream. And believe me, we have a lot of flavors of ice cream. <laughs> For the American students, whose Russian I understand is a little better than mine, I found my visit to the Soviet Union last spring very fascinating. And all of you will have an even greater opportunity to learn about life in that country. The Soviet Union encompass a, has a remarkably rich and diverse culture. You'll find some of the world's greatest literature, art, and music. And you'll also find other young people who will be very interested in learning more about you and where you come from. I'm especially pleased that you'll be staying with Soviet families, because for all the differences between our systems of government and the practical and philosophical differences are important, I think you will find that as people, we share so much. Above all, we share our common humanity, and our dreams of peace and freedom and a decent life for ourselves and our children. For the students from both countries, you will have a chance to imagine what it would be like to grow up in the other country, go to their schools, to work, to worship, and to raise a family. You'll hear each other's music and see each other's fashion and share with each other your personal goals and ambitions and personal hopes. And I think as you get to know each other, and become friends with each other, you may come to believe something that I have long believed and felt myself. And that is that most of the problems in this world between countries do not exist between people. 
people around the world have much more in common than they do differences. The differences are between governments and the problems are between governments. It's not people who begin wars or suppress freedom. It's governments that do that. As I've said many times, if it were just up to young people like you, if you could all get together and meet one another, I think you'd become fast friends, and I don't think there would ever be another war. Well, you have a lot to look forward to, and not only the exchange program. This is a fascinating time to be alive, and I think your generation will lead us into one of the most exciting ages in human history. You know, as I look at all of you, I can't tell which of you are American and uh, which are Soviet. And I'm glad that you will have this chance to get to know one another and to learn from one another. So I won't take any time now to talk about my operation. <laughs> I, will just, I will just say a thank you to all of you, and God bless all of you. Four hours later, the Soviet students and teachers arrived at BCC and entered the auditorium to warm applause. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Welcome to tonight's ceremony in honor of our Soviet guests. 
Tonight is the first step in what will be a very exciting exchange program between our two countries. We would like to thank the people and organizations who have made this program possible. President Reagan, who proposed the exchange at the May Summit in Moscow, the American Council of Teachers of Russian, Sister Cities International, and the National Association of Secondary School Principals. In addition, warm thanks to Mr. Gregory Guroff, Mr. James Bedron, and of course, our principal, Mrs. Nancy Powell. On behalf of the entire Bethesda Chevy Chase community, we would like to extend to our Soviet guests a warm welcome and best wishes for a very enjoyable stay. Дорогие друзья, добро пожаловать на вечер, поздравленный нашим советским гостям. Сегодняшний вечер – это первый шаг к началу важного обмена между школьниками наших стран. Мы хотим поблагодарить следующих людей и организаций, которые сделали эту программу возможной. Президент Рейган – который предложил обмен во время встречи в мае в Москве, Американский совет преподавателей русского языка, международные города с сестрой и Национальная ассоциация директоров средних школ. Кроме того, мы сердечно благодарим мистер Грегори Гуров, мистер Джеймс Бидрон и, конечно, директора нашей школы Нэнси Пау. От имени всех жителей Bethesda и Chevy Chase мы тепло приветствуем наших советских гостей и желаем им приятного визита. Our first speaker this evening is a person who has played a key role in, in the improving relations between our two nations, representing the government and people of the Soviet Union, His Excellency Yuri Dibinin, Ambassador of the USSR. Uh, I don't know exactly what language I am supposed, I am supposed to speak. <laughs> Russian or English. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, дорогие друзья, I am very pleased and honored to have the privilege to be present at Bethesda Chevy Chase High School on the occasion of the visit to the United States of Soviet high school students from Moscow School Number 45. This exchange is one of the spectacular results of the agreements reached between our two leaders, General Secretary Gorbachev and President Reagan. Thanks to their vision, we now have support at the highest governmental level for intensified people-to-people -people contacts between our two countries for the joint training and academic exchange of our young people. The presence here today of Secretary Schulz, one of the architects of the new Soviet-American relations, underscores the significance of this undertaking. George Schulz, who together with Eduard Shevardnadze have done so much for the U.S.-Soviet understanding, can be justifiably proud of such an accomplishment as these Soviet-American youth exchanges. The importance of this kind of cooperation for the future of our two countries cannot be overstated. The future of our countries lies in the hands of our youth. Improvement of the Russian and English language skills of our people will help them better understand the history and culture of our countries. Studying, learning, as well as relaxing together and staying with families 
will also help identify new paths and forms of cooperation in the spirit of new thinking. Today, we are greeting the first group of Soviet, stu of Soviet students and their American counterparts who have started the new exchange. I am happy to witness such a great event, which I am sure will open a new page in Soviet-American cooperation. I am also convinced that through increased people-to-people -people contacts, we shall serve better the interests of our countries. I would like to wish you, to wish you all every success in your studies. Uh, there is no doubt that you are, or, or, you are, are making an important contribution to the, development, to the developing spirit of trust and confidence in both the Soviet Union and the United States. Let me say many thanks to the representatives of the American Council of Teachers of Russian, the National Association of Secondary School Principals and Sister Cities, Inter uh, Cities International for their support of this important program. Uh, special thanks to our generous hosts, Bethesda Chevy Chase High School for their hospitality and warm welcome, welcome to my compatriots. Thank you very much and uh, to our, to my compatriot, compatriots, I would like to wish all the best uh, here in this hospital, American soul. Всевом самого добро. Thank you very much. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we are proud to introduce to you a father of a former county history teacher, a member of our community, the architect of United States foreign policy for the past six and a half years, a man who is both our neighbor and a citizen of the world, the Honorable George P. Schultz, Secretary of State. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I wish I could speak Russian like you do. <laughs> but it's a symbol. Ambassador Dubinin said that he wasn't sure what language he should speak. And I think he spoke the language of friendship and understanding. And that's the language that you are speaking and we will be speaking to you. This is a great moment. Why? Well, of course, it's very important in your lives the students who are here and the families that will receive you. But it has the broader significance that Ambassador Dubinin ascribed to it. This is the start of a program where there'll be a thousand students, high school students, Americans studying in the Soviet Union, Soviets studying in the United States each year. It's part of a broader people-to-people -people exchange. I think it's estimated there'll be around 100,000 Americans visiting in the Soviet Union this year. The largest number ever of Soviets coming here is streaming this way. We're learning from each other. We're having fun. At the recent Christmas holiday season, I was out in San Francisco with my children and grandchildren, and we saw advertised in the paper the Moscow Circus was in town. So we bought tickets and we went. And 
Of course, my grandchildren, let alone me, they were just fascinated with the, all the things they saw. It started with playing the two national anthems, as we had here. And it ended with that great scene that you probably have seen. I'm sure you've all been to the circus. With the two horses wheeling around the ring, one carrying an American flag and the other a Soviet flag. There was a capacity audience. Everybody cheered. Everybody was enthusiastic. So you're part of something quite significant. It started, as the ambassador said, in Geneva in late 1985 at the summit meeting where the people-to-people -people exchange was agreed on between President Reagan and General Secretary Gorbachev. And that was followed up on in Moscow this June as that was extended to reach high school students. So this is something that has a very big significance that you're starting in on. You're going to do something that not very many other of the visitors do. You're going to be living with American families. So you're going to get to know us, as we say, warts and all. <laughs> and as our students go to the Soviet Union, the reverse, the same will be true. I've heard both the president and the general secretary get off these little sayings. The president likes to say, it's better to talk to each other than about each other. And also, I've heard the general secretary say, it's better to see something once than to read about it a 100 times. So direct experience is important. But I think beyond the enjoyment and the fun you'll have, you have a responsibility. Both the Soviet students who are here and the Americans who will be with them. And that responsibility is to learn as much as you can. Because you have, in its best sense of the word, a diplomatic mission. You're here to learn but also to teach, to teach about yourself, your own life, your way of life, to learn about ours, go back home, tell people about what you did. You have a job to do. So I feel sure that you're going to do that job well, and I feel sure that you're going to get the warmest of welcomes here, and you're going to have some fun in the process. So I take great pleasure and pride in being here at the high school, Nancy, and having a chance to be part of this as a person who lives in the neighborhood, and to wish you all the best in your stay here in the United States. Thank you.
We would now like to introduce the students and teachers from Moscow School 45 and their host families. Now, originally, the students were supposed to be sitting with their host families. However, as they arrived late, I guess what we're going to go ahead and do is recognize both the students and the families. We'd like them to stand up, and I guess you can see each other for the first time. So here we go. Just wave at each other something. Um, Margarita Babayan staying with Laura Shipler and her family. <laughs> Olga Vasyukova, staying with Amber Blaha and her family. <laughs> Yelena Karieva, staying with Stacy Cannon and her family. Marina Kurienaya, staying with Aaron Wiener and his family. <laughs> Maria, Ma Maria Masiuradzie, staying with Heather Tredek and her family. <laughs> Ksenia Manyushi, Manyushi, staying with Kendra Hershey, Kendra Hershey and her family. Anastasia Nemirovskaya, staying with Stephanie Drilling and her family. <laughs> Natalia Areshina, staying with Andrew Bombek and his family. <laughs> Natalia Patkina, staying with Anne Ursano and her family. Um, Kolya Lyevchenko, who will be staying with Elliot Milholland and his family. <laughs> Pavel Kalpakov, who will be staying with Aaron G. Clef and his family. <laughs> Alyosha Rybnikov, who will be staying with Jacob Asher and his family. Alyosha Sarokin, who will be staying with uh, Dave Bardash and his family. Dave and Teddy Bardash. <laughs> Nikita Pisnachevsky, who will be staying with Christian and John Roy and their family. <laughs> Pavel Cherenkov, who will be staying with Stephen Hathaway and his family. And the teachers from School 45, uh, Alexander Zalmanovich Besmirtny, who will be staying with Niels Olsen and his family. <laughs> and Olga Konstantinovna Postnikova, who will be staying with Philip Portlock and his family. And now a special performance uh, is BCC student Dan Schatz, who will play an original composition on the auto harp.
national, state, and local officials headed by Congresswoman Connie Morella came to honor our guests. From, uh, all of the county county Council, Council Vice President William E. Hanna welcomed our guests tonight. to Montgomery County. But what a way to start 1989. I can't tell you how delighted we are to have this program initiated here in Montgomery County at Bethesda Chevy Chase, one of our premier schools. That's, that is very exciting. Superintendent exciting of Schools, Bethesda Dr. Chevy Harry Chase Pitt, school, brought greetings from, from the school Canada system. Schools. As superintendent of schools, I welcome our Soviet students and their teachers, and I want you to know how proud and fortunate we feel to be able to share our schools, our homes, and our learning experiences with you. This student exchange program is a wonderful opportunity for us to learn from each other, to understand each other, to discover the many areas in which we agree, and to discuss the areas in which we may disagree. It is through education that each of our students, Soviet and American, can reach for the future. DC has many strengths, including its excellent foreign language Lee Ingram, program, president of the, the school's Parent Teacher Association, welcomed the students to the right BCC now. community. Finally, although each of you will be living with one American family, we want you to know that the rest of us stand ready to help make your visit a comfortable and pleasant one. You are the guests of us all, and we have much to learn from each other. John Newsom, a junior, shared his great talent with the audience. The media covered the welcoming ceremony extensively. Barbara Harrison of WRC-TV reported live from the concert. Jim, right now there is a welcoming concert going on for the young Soviet visitors. It's uh, here at Bethesda Chevy Chase High School, where many of them will be attending for the next four weeks. Fifteen students from Moscow School Number 45 got an enthusiastic round of applause when they arrived here tonight to meet the families that they're going to be staying with for the next four weeks. The students, as I said, will have four weeks to get to know America, and tonight the students here at Bethesda Chevy Chase have got a big night planned for their visitors. <laughs> It seems that everyone is enjoying themselves tonight. Right now we have a violinist who comes from Chevy Chase uh, High School, but there's a Chevy Chase who's playing for the students. There's more planned for tonight, a all-American spaghetti dinner, there'll be a girls basketball game, and then a battle of the bands, a real American evening for the Soviet students. <laughs> now to welcome our guest to the school, a woman who has done a tremendous amount of work putting all of this together, our principal, Mrs. Nancy Powell. <laughs> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the entire school, let me say welcome to Bethesda Chevy Chase High School. It's not often that people have the opportunity to live in an era when they can sense a shift in the direction of history. Surely it must be even more rare for a school to find itself part of both the symbol and the substance of that change. We are thrilled to be part of that change. But my remarks are particularly addressed to you, students of School 45 and your teachers. To you, we have opened our homes and our hearts, our classrooms and library, our hallways, and our open lunch. <laughs> you have left behind your family and your friends, your school and the security of familiar places to enter our family life and our school. Thank you for making that sacrifice and taking that risk to bring us your message of peace 
and hope. Please call on any of us at BCC is there some, if there is something any of us can do to make your visit more enjoyable or more fulfilling. You are most welcome to BCC. The Chevy Chase Elementary School Chorus, under their director Joan Gregoric, entertained the audience. Gregory Guroff, coordinator of the presidential initiative that made the exchange possible, shared his special point of view. His son and daughter attended both School 45 and BCC. It is perfectly appropriate that these children have been welcomed by the President of the United States, that the Secretary of State took time from a very busy schedule to come here to welcome this group, that the Ambassador has been here and was at the White House. If we are truly interested in transforming the relationship between the two countries, then we must take seriously changing the way we teach our children. There is no better way than allowing them to get to know each other and for them to see firsthand how the other side lives.
teacher. Appropriately, our welcoming concert began with speeches from two students. Now, sharing the last word were two teachers, BCC's Russian teacher, Mr. James Biedrin, followed by School 45's English program director, Alexander Zaharovich Besmerny. We're really glad that this exchange is finally actually beginning. Uh, <laughs> President Reagan and General Secretary Gorbachev reached the agreement. Officials of the country signed the agreement. Many important people have welcomed you. But in the end, in the final analysis, it's really student to student. It's really teacher to teacher. And it's really student to family. I'm very glad to see you all. I'm happy to be here with you. Uh, when we were in Moscow preparing for this trip, we slightly suspected that we would be received on such a high school level. But we did expect to be received on the presidential level, state departmental level, <laughs> ambassadorial level. I do hope you forgive You'll forgive my cold and my English. Uh, before coming here, we made a thorough study of your pine trees. You know what I mean. And uh, when we were given the list of 25 American schools ready to receive the Soviets, we immediately stopped here. And we came to the following conclusion next to Washington, D.C., stands a school called BCC. <laughs> All the schools are good, you see. <laughs> but the best is BCC. I remember the lines composed by your uh, wonderful poet and my favorite, who said, Something there is that does love a wall that wants it down. And I especially like another poem of his, which goes like this. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. I hope that during this month, those little icicles that remain of cold will melt away. Thank you for the warm welcome. mystery to most of us, as we no doubt are to them. But although we may march to the beats of different drums, there is something we have in common now. A bunch of high school seniors who have discovered just how harmonious our moves to those different beats can be. The most striking thing about the young Soviet exchange students who have been visiting the Washington area for the last few weeks is the fact that there is little to discern them from their young American hosts. Last night, both hosts and guests were treated to a farewell dinner by the Georgetown restaurant Philomena. Its owner was among many in Washington who hoped to send the students back with fond memories of their stay in the States. But the thing they will no doubt remember most, one of them told me, is how much at home they have felt here. You know, I have freedom here, as, as in the Soviet Union. And this is really very good. And exactly what is freedom to any teenager, U.S. or Soviet? I can watch TV and uh, go with my friends, whatever I want uh, to do. Yes, this is really very good. In the home where Ksenia Minutius has lived for the past three weeks with her American host family, what was also good was the freedom to share, to make friends. 
to get to know that some things Americans think and Soviets think are not exactly true. I think they, uh, most of them think, uh, think that American is very material uh, people and they think only about money and uh, about business. And you know, there are uh, part of truth, but only a little part. Students, I think, uh, they think about uh, their future. After four weeks of BCC in the USA, our Soviet students and their American families bid an emotional farewell. <laughs>